and with a formal part of the program. And as you can see uh, from looking at the program, we're gonna hear from four of our student athletes, Jonathan King from the baseball team, golfer Ali Schneiderjans, uh, from women's tennis, Megan Curry, and then DJ White from the football team. But first, we get the chance to hear from one of our two endowment donors that are with us this evening. Now, neither of our endowment donor speakers really need much of an introduction around this campus or city, but we're gonna give them one anyway. And we begin with Mary Rocket Brock. Mary has been, as many of you know, majority owner of the Atlanta Dream since 2011. Uh, she's an avid sports fan. She and her husband, John, they have also obviously been longtime supporters of Georgia Tech Athletics, funding the major leadership gift for the John and Mary Brock football indoor practice facility. Mary serves on numerous educational and charitable boards that contribute not only locally, but also regionally and nationally. On the education side, Mary and John have funded chairs and scholarships in biomedical and chemical engineering, not only at Georgia Tech, but also at Emory, with a particular emphasis on cancer research. A native of Moss Point, Mississippi, Mary graduated summa cum laude from Miami of Ohio, earning her bachelor's in science and math education, and also she got her master's from Miami of Ohio in curriculum development. She married her husband, John, while he was a student here at Tech, and the couple had three children, Rebecca, John the Fourth, and Major, and through those three children, they've now been blessed with five lovely grandchildren. Please welcome a dear friend of the Jackets, Mary Brock. Uh, I guess she's in the restroom. <laughs> so this is awkward. Uh, how about a hand for Andy Blanton, who's running the lights and video from way up in the crow's nest? There she's coming. How about a hand for Mary Rocket Brock over there? Mary, you missed the introduction, but I want you to know that it was unbelievable. So... <laughs> Okay, leave it to John Brock to tell me I've got plenty of time to go out. <laughs> when all else fails, bl blame your husband. I'm really so excited to be here tonight. It's such a special evening, and I've already checked out the tables around the front to make sure I've got a nice, friendly group, and I think I do. And I couldn't be happier to be up here speaking on behalf of student athletes, many of you who are out there in the audience, and those of us who support you. Very, very special evening. I think a lot of you know, and maybe you heard this, hopefully not in this introduction that I missed, but I feel like a lot of you have heard the John and Mary Brock story, but if you didn't, I'll give you a little, a little tidbit of it. John and I grew up together on the Mississippi Gulf Coast in a tiny little town that truly was a slice of life. I met John when I was 10 years old, read in my diary when I was 12 years old that he was such a nice boy, I thought I would marry him one day. Now, I've got to tell you, John likes to bring that diary page up on his PowerPoint presentations when he's talking about thinking ahead and good decision making and everybody's about to fall asleep. But just so you know, that was one week and the next week there was another nice boy and the next week there was another nice boy. And <laughs> not that there were that many in Moss Point. John and I did, though, date in high school. He graduated, went away to Georgia Tech, and a year later, I went away to college as well. We did get married while he was a tech student, and we loved our tech life. It was a lot of fun for us, but never in a million years did we think that decades, and I do mean decades <laughs> later, that we would be co-chairing campaign Georgia Tech. In fact, our anniversary was yesterday, and we were married for 46 years. So... <clears throat> Now, John always likes to say in Mississippi we get married at 12, but no, we're, we're just old. <laughs> anyway, as time went on, though, it became really important to us to think about ways that we could give back to Georgia Tech and we could pay back. And I think Campaign Georgia Tech has brought us full circle in doing that, and that's been very, very rewarding to us. But thinking tonight as to why I'm here 
endowed scholarships, permanent endowed scholarships. So permanent as in they're forever, 5, 10, 15, 20, 50, hundreds of years. They never go away. They impact student athletes today and they impact student athletes years from now. And that's an investment that you just can't match. And you'll hear from many people tonight, certainly including these student athletes, that it's more than just dollars, it's more of the value. And I think all of us who care about this really think the value of it is more significant for sure than the money that we put into it. That's the easy part. And then you think endowed. Endowed, as you'll hear from anyone in development, means it goes on forever. It's permanent, only the profit is used, only the income is used, and then it, the, the balance is used to grow the fund for year after year after year. So we feel like that really is what Campaign Georgia Tech is also all about. What can we do today, and what can many of you in, your, in this area and other areas at Georgia Tech, what can we do today that impacts Georgia Tech and this great institute years down the road. All you have to listen, do is listen to Bud Peterson's, President Peterson's vision for the future, and you will believe that there's nothing that you can do better, honestly, for the good of mankind than to do something for Georgia Tech. And in athletics, I think that the way John and I relate that a better institute with athletics, and I think all of us here tonight believe that so much, is a better athletic program is going to result in a better institute. I mean, we win the Orange Bowl, the football team's gonna have recruits listening to them a little bit more. They talk to someone like Michelle Joseph and they think, hey, this is a place where I want to be. So I think that's what kind of, uh, kind of piqued our interest in athletics as well as other areas in which we had been, been involved. Um, why women's basketball? Because that is my endowed scholarship. Why women's basketball? Well. Clearly, basketball is important to me. My friend Kathy Betty brought me into the Atlanta Dream ownership, and she and I have a lot in common in that area. She kept the dream here in this city when it was likely going to be going somewhere else. And I've, I've enjoyed so much and still do my association with the Atlanta Dream as a co-owner. Now, with the dream, we would tell you any day, Kathy knows this as well as anyone, that we want it to be sustainable as a business, because that's the only way the league is going to be sustainable. You've got to have a team that's, that's working and making money or it's not going to exist in the future. However, with the WNBA and clearly the Atlanta Dream, we also think there's a mission that we have. And that mission, and our players buy into it every day of their lives, is that they're in a position, they're very fortunate, and they can give back to the community. And we support that wholeheartedly, and we think that's part of what we should do, and that is part of what we do. Our, our team members are all college graduates. Uh, they are incredible role models. You know, they're out there letting other young women know why they can succeed in life if they can succeed in basketball. And speaking of role models makes me think of someone who's in this room who epitomizes the role model for young women. And that is our head basketball coach, Michelle Joseph. <clears throat> and Michelle became, early this year, the winningest, this is one of my favorite new words, the winningest coach in Georgia Tech women's sports history. And we're just so, so proud of Michelle. I'd also like to introduce my scholar athlete, Kayla Davis. Kayla is sitting right here, one of my friendly faces. And Kayla, um, I'm very proud of Kayla anytime on and off the court. But last week we happened to go, John and I happened to go to South Bend, Indiana, along with Val Peterson, to see the Georgia Tech women play Notre Dame, a great, a great arena and lots of energy. And Kayla scored her thousandth, another good word, her thousandth career goal faster than any other Georgia Tech basketball player has. And so again, Kayla, congratulations. So thinking of giving back to Georgia Tech and what story, the story that we have shared is we've gone throughout the state and the country and even internationally with the Petersons and others in development. 
we always say, you know, this is what we need to be doing now. You know, maybe you're interested in buildings, or maybe you're interested in scholarship, or maybe you're interested in endowing faculty chairs. And for those of us here tonight, our interest is in athletics. And it's something that I think that you can do that is a payback to Georgia Tech. And so I just want to encourage all of you who have done something, I want to say just keep thinking of other things you can do. Those of you who have done something, I also want to say thank you. But thinking of the now and thinking of the present, this is the time that we can do something. This is going to be our legacy. And for those student athletes who are out there, very soon, someday, you're going to be the ones that we need to pay back. So just think of the experience that you're getting and think of the payback that you can give to this incredible institute. Thanks so much, and go Jackets! Thank you, Mary. All right, now time to hear from our first student athlete, and that is a standout southpaw pitcher on Coach Danny Hall's baseball team. Had a breakout freshman campaign in 2013, then he came out of the gates hot last year. It was 2-0 with a 196 ERA through four starts, but then he got injured, sidelined him for the rest of the season. But after a solid spring, he's back or solid fall, I should say, he's back ready to climb the hill this spring. Now in the classroom, he was a 2013 Academic All-ACC selection and has twice been named to the ACC Academic Honor Roll. Please welcome Jonathan King. Thank you, Brandon. Let me fix this really quick. Like Brennan said, my name is Jonathan King. I'm a third year industrial engineering student and I'm a red shirt sophomore left handed pitcher for Coach Hall on the baseball team. I'm going to begin by saying how humbled I am for this opportunity to speak to all of you and how thankful I am, especially to my endowment donors, Pat and Becky Hickok, for your generosity. Um, without it, I wouldn't be able to, to attend such a prestigious university and play for one of the nation's top baseball programs. I've been playing baseball since I was four years old, and in those 17 years, the amount of memories that I've made are endless. I could stand up here all day and talk about how much I love baseball, but while passion is a main reason why we're athletes, the major reason that we do what we do is to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. We don't wake up at 6 a.m. for workouts or stay up late studying all night on a bus ride or stand in the freezing cold because we love doing it. We do it because we want to be a part of bringing the next championship back to Georgia Tech. Last spring, I had the opportunity of playing on a team that won an ACC championship. And while I was, like Brandon said, sidelined with an injury for most of the year, it was still an unbelievable experience to share with my teammates. This past December, I had the opportunity to do something even bigger. I travel with a group of my fellow athletes, which you'll hear from another one later, to the Dominican Republic to help those in need. Um, we left the day after finals, on a, on a Saturday, and we spent the next five days serving people in any way possible. We did anything from spreading rock and sand to create an area to our, for a playground, to giving out our lunch to kids that were hungry and in need, to uh, spending time with the people of the camp that we worked in. And while I was over there, I learned that truly serving someone is not about how much you do for them or how much work you get done. It's about the time that you spend with them, the amount that you learn about them, and the relationship that you build with those people. There was a man over there, and his name was Marcos. He was the leader, or I, I guess the, the owner of the camp or the mission that we worked in. And he told us that the relationships that we build with those children will mean much more and be much more important than the amount of work that we get done. Now, I, like most other Georgia Tech students, didn't believe that. You know, I wanted to go over there and get as much work done as I can because that's how I was trained and that's how I was raised. Um, I was wrong. I learned that a game of catch or a piggyback ride meant so much more to those kids, and just spending time with them and being with them was what they really wanted. Even when we were working, there was kids right behind us the entire time helping us, whether we were painting walls, uh, carrying rocks across the lot, or moving sand or whatever we were doing, there was always a kid right behind us helping. And what, what really meant the most to them was us being there with them. Us being with those, those children and, and being role models to them and being their friends is what meant the most to them. Um, 
there were a couple words that were stressed to us the entire time we were there, and it was earn the right to be heard. Those words, those words sank in while I was there, and what it means is that we can't tell people what they need. We have to learn about them and ask them what they think they need. We must build a relationship with them and spend time with them and show them why we care, why, why we want to be there with them, and why Georgia Tech cares. And as Ms. Brock started to talk about a mission, the last sentence of the Georgia Tech mission statement says this, we will be leaders in improving human condition in Georgia, the United States, and around the globe. This series of trips to the Dominican Republic that the student athletes are able to take is a way for Georgia Tech to, def to define what it means for a university to be a servant leader, an institution that puts the needs of others ahead of its own. I'm gonna close by saying thank you again for anybody that made this trip possible. The student athletes that went on this trip and that are gonna to get to go on this trip will be transformed just as we were. We will, they'll learn to have true compassion for other people and to want to make an impact in the world. Thank you. Uh, great stuff. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Uh, now we move on to speaker number two in the student athlete category. Speaker number two is very good at the game of golf. Uh, he's not as good as I am, but he's working towards it. He's a, uh, a two-time All-American. I was a three-time All-American. Um, that's not true. He's the reigning ACC Player of the Year. He's also the conference champion in the ACC. And in 47 career events, he has 20 top 10 finishes and six wins. In August, he received the Mark McCormick Medal as the world's number one ranked amateur player. Now, with that honor, he gets to play in not only the 2015 U.S. Open, he also gets to play in the Open Championship over the pond as well. In the classroom, he has been named to the ACC Academic Honor Roll four times and to the ACC All-Academic Golf Team twice. He's wearing a really nice suit, but I want you to know that his mother picked it out. He did not. Ladies and gentlemen, Ali Schneider-Jans. I want to thank Brandon for that compliment. I now feel very confident up here. Um, I'm honored to be asked to speak to you all tonight. Uh, please forgive me, I, I'm trying to organize these notes. But I wrote some notes and I wanted to make sure that I said everything I needed to say. Um, I'd like to, to share with you guys a little bit how I got to Georgia Tech and, and how it's helped me evolve to the player and the person I am today in my senior year. And also, I uh, want to share my decision to finish what I started and get my degree. Uh, mostly, I want to thank so many people for their help along the way and the donors in the room who've made such an experience possible for me and the other athletes in the room. I can specifically speak for the golf team. Um, even though I was born in Dallas, I consider myself an Atlanta native. And, uh, our, our family moved here when I was two to Kennesaw, and since then I've been here besides one year we moved back to Massachusetts, uh, where my parents are from. So I've been an Atlanta native ever since. I always enjoyed sports, and I started out playing many different sports at a very young age, uh, none of which included golf. Uh, it wasn't until it was, I was 12 years old that I decided to take up golf. My friends, who occasionally played for fun with their fathers, asked me to come out and play one day. And the first time I ever played with my friends, I shot 63 on nine holes <laughs> from the ladies' tees. But I loved the challenge, and I loved the game. And I started to go to the course whenever I had open weekends. And, and I became obsessed with the game and improving to shoot lower scores. I loved how individual the game was and the fact that I could practice and play on my own and do everything my own way. Uh, I realized how lucky I was to have the luxury to have my mother take me to the course every day after school and then bring me to wherever I needed to be. Um, I started playing in competitive tournaments and dropped every other sport at the age of 13. It was a big shock to me to give up every other sport that I've been playing my whole life at the time. 
but I knew that that was what I wanted to do, and I and then for me to focus on golf, I needed to drop baseball, drop basketball, and just focus on going to the course and, and my game. That's all I wanted to do. I started playing in competitive events at 13. Um, I continued to compete in tournaments, and I worked my way to the highest levels of junior golf. I eventually worked my way up to becoming number two in the in the number two ranked junior in, in golf in the world. And uh, I was noticed by Coach Hepler as early as my freshman year in high school. And he was on the scene to watch me play the a US Open qualifier at 14 years old. I was the youngest in the country to try to qualify for the US Open. And uh, I remember really well, my mother took me to the course to play that qualifier. And she was, uh, she was mentioning she wasn't sure it was a great decision to take me and miss school. I, I really wasn't, my focus on school wasn't up to par at the time. And I, uh, I vividly remember her, you know, bringing me to the course. And I remember calling her after the round and saying, hey, mom, I actually, I made it through locals of US Open qualifying. And she was so excited. And uh, then I then I told her, but I'm thirsty because I, you forgot to give me a drink while you were chirping at me for missing school. <laughs> Good times, Mom. I love you. Anyway, I tell that story because it's telling that a big reason my mom was so impressed with Coach and uh, Georgia Tech was due to the fact that academics were such an important part of the picture. And Coach was so passionate about developing the whole person in all aspects of life, not just the athlete. I was also very familiar with Georgia Tech because of the success that we've had as a team and also the in individuals have had, and not just at Tech, but also in their following pro careers. I, um, in addition to that, James White, who is a former teammate at Harrison High School, who's a good friend of mine, I respected his focus and intention to play at the highest level someday and he felt that Georgia Tech was the best place to go if he wanted to play on the PGA Tour. So I was very excited to commit here as a recruit late in my sophomore year of high school. And I'd actually decided to graduate high school early and um, enroll here in January of 2011. The transition to Georgia Tech was diffi more difficult than I imagined. I had been a decent student in high school, but my life was almost all about golf. And conveniently, it was organized how I wanted it. I could go straight to the course from school. I could then get a ride to my trainer at six, and then mama had dinner for me ready at, right after that. And uh, then I could work on my putting before bed, and it was pretty easy to get good. Um, I'm so lucky to have been able to do that. I, and of course, I realized I couldn't do that at Georgia Tech. Um, I recognized there was a lot of ob other obstacles to face, so I learned to overcome and manage my adversities, get the job done in the classroom, and also do the best I could with my game. There's more in life than golf and school, of course, uh, and with the help of the guidance I've had from Coach Hepler and my mom, who's been there since day one, I was able to put things in perspective and evolved as a person and player over time. The summer of 2011, right before starting my freshman year for the team, I, uh, I missed qualifying for the US Open by one shot. I had a good friend of mine caddy for me, Matt Dias. He was my best friend, and I always chose him to caddy when he could because his vibes were so positive. We were such good friends. I always played the best golf when I played with him. And uh, you know, less than four months later, just as I'm in the middle of my first fall season competing for Georgia Tech, my life changed and uh, many others because Matt was killed in a wreck. Um, putting things in perspective then became really easy and I grew up really quick. Uh, golf seemed like a way smaller deal to me. Uh, family and friends and my character and my relationships with the people I cared about then became much more important than golf to me. I'll forever be grateful for being part of a team and having such great teammates and friends during that time. And Coach Hepler was such an incredible person to have, so deeply vested on my side during this time. 
and being Georgia, part of Georgia Tech golf was a blessing. My freshman year, so was full of ups and downs as I adjusted to, to that and my demands as a student athlete. My sophomore year highlights included our team winning ACC title and we reached the final four losing to eventual champion Alabama. I was an All-American that year, which was a massive improvement from my freshman year struggles. Uh, my junior year had several highlights. I met my girlfriend, Alexa, who plays on the women's tennis team. Uh, my brother came to start at Georgia Tech, and he, played on, he plays on the baseball team. And both the Georgia Tech golf team and I had a, had a lot of fun and some success last year. We, we won a bunch of events as a team. We won the ACC championship again reached the final eight at NCAAs, and I won several events individually, finishing second at the regionals and also lost in a playoff at the NCAA title. Early this past summer, following my junior year, I reached the number one ranking in amateur golf, and I've said since held that position, giving me an exemption to the US Open at Chambers Bay, and uh, Brandon said the Open at St. Andrews this coming summer. And achieving that ranking, of course, brought into question whether or not to stay for this senior year and get my degree. As many of my pre peers who had had similar success decided to leave early and start their professional careers, and they've done really well doing so. The temptations obviously were very strong. Uh, big financial benefits, incredible events to play, no school, my favorite. And uh, just the general allure of being able to move on to the next stage of my life and hopefully add to the success my contemporaries were having out there. Uh, thanks, thanks to the growing I had done, though, through my experiences here at Georgia Tech the first three years and the great mentoring I had of those closest to me, I was more than capable of making the wisest decision I could make for myself. I'd like to share some of the thoughts and reasons I had to stay to, at Georgia Tech my senior year and get my degree. First reason, actually, is my goal of being the best player in the world someday and the invaluable experience I would have this year playing with big expectations in every college event. I've been expected to win every time I tee it up or at least, ex at least to contend. And even though it's a different level, the expectations, pressure, and emotions associated with that are are similar and the learning opportunity couldn't be more perfect. And I'd like to thank Coach Hepler for making that clear to me. I remember having that conversation with him in his office. Uh, number two, delaying my professional debut would allow, um, allow me to plan for it. Um, selecting a management representation agency and um, structuring my organization was key. It allowed me the opportunity to carefully evaluate my choices and, and having the wise counsel of my trusted advisors to make future plans. It turns out I'm convinced the time lent itself to the best possible decision that may have been not the quick choice. My mother and I were able to put significant due diligence into this decision and we've conducted a very meaningful process. Uh, three, I, I knew I had 30 plus years of professional life on the other side. I didn't want to shortchange myself. Uh, from my time as a college kid. I felt also that my, my golf development would continue through my senior year and put me in an even better position starting out as a professional. Having fa my family and friends and others around me for an additional year was extremely important. My brother Ben on the baseball team and my other little brother Luke who is a, uh, finishing up high school and he's tra transitioning to, into college consideration. It was really important for me to have proximity to them this year, and I definitely don't feel like I could have had that year back. In my opinion, this, couldn't have been re this year couldn't have been regained later. And the, for me to experience that little bit of time with them this year was way more important than having a one-year jump in my career. I wanted to finish what I started and get my degree. Um, this was obviously the reason most people thought I came back, and it is, and I don't, I didn't go to computer science and EAS class for nothing. Um, I've grown to strive not to just be the best golfer, but also be the best person I can be. And to me, this included getting my degree. I'm excited to say I'll be getting that degree this May. Um,
Last but not least, of course, I want to get a national championship for the team and for Coach Hepler. It doesn't define Coach Hepler as a person and definitely not as a coach, but if any coach in all of college deserves a national championship, it's definitely him. I would not be in the position I'm in today without the efforts of so many. In addition to those I've already mentioned in the room, I would also like to, to thank a few others. Uh, Sean Fowler, who has been a close family friend for a long time. He's been so good to my family and I for years, and he definitely deserves some credit for swaying me towards Georgia Tech as a kid. Um, he's helped advise us through important decisions and developments we've had over this crazy road the last couple years, and I'm excited to continue to have him as a trusted advisor and a close friend for a long time. I also want to thank Coach Brendan Webb. We've become really good friends the last couple of years, and I'm hoping that you can stay around at Georgia Tech and keep making such a great impact on the program as you have so far. I also want to thank my teammates, past and present, my, uh, the family that endowed my scholarship, and all the other donors who've contributed to Georgia Tech, and all other Georgia Tech athletics, not just Georgia Tech golf. I've been fortunate enough to get to know many of the Georgia Tech golf donors, and I truly believe we have the best group of, of supporters in the nation. In closing, I want to thank, thank all of you for your support of Georgia Tech, and I, along with the student athletes here tonight, will forever be grateful for your commitment to Georgia Tech. Thanks again. Go Jackets. Thanks, Ollie. Uh, now our second endowment speaker will, will, will come up, and I'm glad he's not in the restroom. Uh, I checked this time. Tom Fanning is chairman, president, and chief executive officer of Southern Company. He has worked for Southern Company for more than three decades. What's interesting is over those three decades, he's held 15 different positions in eight different business units within the company. Like Mary Brock, Tom Fanning is on numerous boards, including the Board of Trustees for the Georgia Tech Foundation and the Georgia Tech College of Management Advisory Board. He also serves as the Deputy Chair of the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. Tom got both his bachelor's and master's degrees in industrial management at Tech, and he was awarded an honorary Doctor of Philosophy from Tech as well. His executive education, meanwhile, includes programs at Harvard School of Business as well as Virginia's Darden School of Business. Please welcome a tech man through and through, Mr. Tom Fanning. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Yeah, it great. Well, it is fabulous being here. Uh, and I can tell you, this is a, a really busy time. Uh, I don't know. I saw some of you out there, some, some friends. Um, just before I we came down here, I was kind of off in the corner, banging on my, you know, iPhone and all that. What you did mention, Brandon, and this is actually true, uh, I uh, work for the Department of Homeland Security, representing all of the electric infrastructure in America, trying to protect the uh, electric networks from cyber terrorism, physical terrorism, and natural disasters. And it just so happens right now we're kind of facing a natural disaster with this gigantic snowstorm that's going up the northeast coast. They're looking like maybe, you know, 30 inches to three feet of snow with 60 mile an hour winds. I know Mike Anderson is here. He's a vice president of Georgia Power. And we just agreed to send over 300 people up there. And I know here we are, and why is he going off on this storm? Well, I was thinking about, you know, that's like game day for us. And when I think about the importance of game day, we all know that when you think about all the accomplishment of the people here as athletes and the people here as sports donors, you know, you're successful in your own right. You just don't walk on the court or the field or the course and become successful. And so it's really important to put in the time to practice. And so what I did tonight, I, uh, I called Paul Bowers, he's the CEO of Georgia Power Company, and said, Paul, I think we need to practice. We've got this big storm, this big thing ahead of us. What do you say we turn the lights off in Athens, Georgia tonight? <laughs> <laughs> so you never know. Watch the evening news. 
But you know, it is about, uh, I, I just wanted to hit kind of three quick topics, then I'll turn the program back over to Brandon. But I, I do want to talk about three things. One of them is kind of what I always call the what's in the house. The what's are kind of what we do in my business. It's make, move, and sell electricity. All of you donors that are so successful, you must exceed excel at the what's, You're, you, you have the ability to contribute to this fine institution. All of you wonderful athletes, um, you are successful. You step on the court and the course and the, the field and, and you contribute and you try your best to win, but if you don't win, you give your all. And I think one of the things that when we think about the what's, Georgia Tech has this terrific track record and under the leadership of guys like Mike Bobinski, I think we're in terrific shape for years ahead. But one of the things I tell the employees of Southern Company all the time, the what's kind of get you in the door. And they're important. But I think as important and more powerful, I am convinced, are the hows. When you hear folks like Jonathan King talk about the importance of Georgia Tech's mission statement, and he didn't talk so much about baseball, but he talked about the contribution to other human beings. When you think about being bigger than your own bottom line, those are really what define your house in life. And I think everything that we hold up as success in athletics translates into success as life. And when we think about the donors here, yeah, you do want to win the Orange Bowl. You guys were terrific. But I think what goes on beyond the Orange Bowl is the fact that we at Georgia Tech do it right. We carry on year after year, and we are proud of the program and proud of the individuals that represent this program. So the what's are important, the how's that are represented by the fine people in this audience really make us proud. The second thing is really just goes to the notion of responsibility. Nobody would be here if you didn't have kind of at least three levels of responsibility. You heard Ollie talk about all the time he put in. Well, the first level of responsibility I love to talk to employees about is just personal responsibility, taking responsibility for yourself. You know, for all the success and adulation you get as an athlete, it's easy to get caught up in that. But when I think about all the hours you put in, when I think about the work I do, and I am so blessed to have the kind of opportunity I do to lead Southern Company, I guarantee you we all have those days where we'd rather go play golf, right? You wake up in the morning and just say, bag this stuff, right? I'd rather go do something else. And yet each of us, the really successful people, finding in ourselves the ability to reignite that fire, to make today better than yesterday and tomorrow better than today. I think taking personal responsibility for accepting the fact that we all have our valleys and reinvesting and getting back in the game really helps us. But I think beyond personal responsibility is this notion of taking responsibility for your teammates. The idea that through me, through you, we can both be better. Holding each other accountable. I think a lot of people find it easy to hold yourself accountable, but boy, holding your teammates accountable is tough. But we'll both be better for that. And then the final thing is really taking responsibility for what I call the enterprise. Now, what is that? Well. It's not self. I guess the teammate and self would be family or work group. But the enterprise is something bigger than your family. It's your community. It's your state. It's your nation. It's not your job or your work group or your company. It's your business. And when I think about the enterprise here, it really transcends sports. Well, of course, it's your contribution on your team. And it's your team. And it's the program. But it's Georgia Tech. Everything we do represents the enterprise. And I think the people here recognize that. And it's one of the reasons why, as donors, I think you find it so appealing to contribute to these folks' enduring success. And then the last thing is kind of a, a fun little designation I like to do. I, I think about mergers and acquisitions all the time. But this absolutely applies to sports. And what I like to say is there's three kinds of companies in the world, or three kinds of institutions in the world. There's birds of prey, moving prey, and roadkill. Roadkill. We all know who they are. They can't get out of bed in the morning. They just fail at everything they do. 
What really defines success in these three designations is your ability to succeed in both long and short term. The poor folks in roadkill stink in the near term and they have no long term. Moving prey are what we see all the time in business and you see it in sports as well. These are the companies that think that if they can just make next quarter's earnings, they're gonna be okay. And in doing so, they devote all their attention to the short term and imperil their long-term success. You see that in sports all the time too. See, we're not after successful games or seasons. We're really after a successful program here. And what we gotta do there is always point towards everything required to build long-term success and in providing for that we're going to make sure that we optimize our short-term opportunity it's true in business and it's true in sports and folks that are able to do both those are the birds of prey and those are the people that succeed long term and so i always find that analogy between sports and business all the time and what i just want to say to you folks that are athletes here and represent us so well you will have the same experience later in life. And I think you'll be able to translate every good thing you're doing here and to make your life successful for decades to come. And so in closing, one of the other things I like to say is you can never say thank you enough in life. Virtually everything we ever accomplish is accomplished through somebody else. And in order for Georgia Tech to have that sustaining long-term level of success as an institution, it requires the what's in the house that you athletes demonstrate and the long-term sustaining support of the donor community here in Atlanta and around the United States. It is so important that we succeed. Thank you for all you do. Nice being with you tonight. All right, still two more student athletes to get to that you're gonna hear from and we'll hear from those now. And the next one is a product of nearby Centennial High School. In the fall of 2013, she became a national champion, winning the national indoor double title alongside her partner, Kendall Woodard. Later that year, as you might imagine, she was named All-American for those efforts. She missed this past fall with an injury, but has already been named a 2015 team captain by her peers. And yes, like the others, she gets it done in the classroom as well. She's a two-time all-academic recipient. And please give a round of applause for Megan Curry. I'm Megan Curry, and I'm a third year business major on the women's tennis team here at Tech. And first of all, I'd just like to thank all the donors for being here tonight. You allow us to live out our dream of playing our sports every day, and we truly wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, so thank you. My dream my whole life was to play college tennis at a Division I school, and I grew up in Georgia my whole life, so Georgia Tech was always in the back of my mind. But um, as all athletes know, the recruiting process is a very long and tiring process, and I visited a lot of schools, and everyone just kept telling me, oh, you'll just have that feeling that you know that this is where you're supposed to go to school, and I never really had that feeling until I stepped on Georgia Tech campus on my official visit, and I'd been to Tech multiple times before, living right down the road in Alpharetta, and I just never had that feeling until my, my official visit and uh, there was a sense of community and family that I had never felt anywhere before, and I knew that this was the place I was supposed to be. And my last two and a half years here, I have experienced things that I would have never experienced, thought I would have experienced. Um, I've had the pleasure of having, being on an amazing team these past couple years, having amazing coaches and strength coach, and. With the help of them, I was able to become an All-American and a national championship, national champion last year. But uh, I'd have to say one of my favorite experiences here at Tech happened uh, in December, a little bit over a month ago, when I was able to go to Dominican Republic on a service trip with 19 other student athletes with FCA for about 
six days. And I can honestly say that not only was it the best experience that I've had here at Tech, but one of the best experiences I've had in my life. And uh, just being able to serve the children in the Dominican Republic and being able to share the love of our sports with them was just something, a feeling that you can't really describe. It was just amazing. And uh, as Jonathan mentioned earlier, we had the pleasure of serving with Marcos down in the Dominican Republic. And uh, it was such an honor to be able to um, experience what he experiences his whole life. He gave up everything he had here to serve down in the Dominican Republic and seeing how much he impacted his community and just the love he had for everyone around was something inspiring. And he always told us it's not about building walls, it's about building relationships. And that's what we did. And uh, it was one of the most eye-opening experiences. Uh, most of us got the chance to walk around the barrio where we had been working. We'd been doing construction and painting and playing sports with the kids, but uh, visiting the families there when we were able to walk around it was the best thing about the trip. We were able to just spend a couple minutes talking with the parents and or trying to talk to them in Spanish. And uh, it was it was life changing just hearing the the stories and the love that they had and just seeing the conditions that they lived in and it was amazing. And it's so easy to get wrapped up in everything. We're so competitive, all the all the wins and all the losses and wanting to be the best and everything that you truly forget what is important in life. And uh, right when we got there the first day, I always remember we went to a baseball field and the kids had no shoes on, but they just were running around, giving it their all, getting scratched up and bleeding everywhere. And they just smiles never left their faces. And it was just an image that I'll always remember. And what made it extra special was the group that I got to experience it with. Uh, we truly became a family down there, and there's nothing like the Georgia Tech family. And I just can't wait for other student athletes to experience what we all got to experience down in the Dominican Republic on future trips. And there are many memories that I will take from Georgia Tech when I graduate, but that was definitely one of the ones that will always be at the top of the list. Um, and it was a dream that I would never have been able to uh, accomplished without the Georgia Tech family and the donors. So thank you. And go Jackets. Thank you, Megan. All right, our final student athlete to speak this evening, and then after him we'll hear from AD Mike Babinski. But our final student athlete is DJ White of the football team. A DJ made an immediate impact from day one as a freshman on the flats, but certainly his breakout campaign was this past season as a junior. The speedy defensive back led the Jackets not only in interceptions, but also in pass breakups. His numerous timely monumental defensive plays this past year earned him the nickname Big Play DJ. But no play was bigger than that overtime interception that you saw in Athens to seal the victory. And it made Roddy Jones scream like a schoolgirl. A Dean's List student majoring in business administration, I present to you DJ White. Um, thank you, Brandon, for that flattering introduction. Um, no matter who I talk to, everywhere I go, people want to bring up the pick against Georgia. And it um, certainly was a big play, so uh, that's something I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. Um, my name is DJ White, as Brandon already mentioned. Um, I'm on behalf of the Georgia Tech football team and really the entire athletic association, I do truly want to thank everybody in attendance here, but especially the donors for everything you've done and everything you've given to this school because if it wasn't for you, men like young men like myself would not have the opportunity to go to school at Tech. Um, I grew up in McDonough, Georgia, about 30 minutes south of here. Um, Two-parent household, three younger brothers, you know, we, we, we were well off financially, but at the same time, they couldn't afford to send us to school, you know, on their own. So um, being able to be at a school like Tech is truly a testament to everybody in this room, and I thank you for that. Um, my story about how I got to Tech 
it's a little bit interesting. Um, I grew up a Tech fan, as I said, close to Georgia. And, uh, you know, at first, throughout my recruiting process, I did not choose Georgia Tech. I was verbally committed elsewhere. And in the back of my mind, or really in the front of my mind, was all about going to school for football only and uh, hopefully get an opportunity to play on the next level one day. But um, due to some circumstances behind the scenes, um, it really made me question that logic as far as why you would choose a school and why would you go there. And when I thought back on it and I really took the time to, to consider everything you know, that, that goes with it, um, it was pretty clear choice for me that Tech was the obvious way to go, not only with this good athletic program, good football team, but also academically as well, and as prestigious as a university as it is, getting a chance to meet different people who've come through um, is, is really an, a great opportunity. And I'm thankful and I'm, and I'm happy that I made that decision. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, um, so coming to Tech was a, was a big, big deal for me. Getting a chance to play early and, and, and be a part of this football team was, was a lot of fun as well, especially this past season with the Orange Bowl victory. Um, all my teammates here uh, in attendance definitely deserve a round of applause. And, and I'm just so thankful for them and, and, and their contributions as well. Because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have won that, obviously, as a, as a team. That's a team ach achievement. Um, <clears throat> one thing I want to leave everybody here with is that I strongly believe that uh, by the grace of God, everyone in this room has been gifted in some way, uh, whether you, it is gifted resourcefully uh, as a donor or athletically as a student athlete, everybody here is gifted in some form or fashion. And I truly believe we are all accountable and all have a responsibility to utilize those gifts to the best of our advantage. Obviously as athletes on the field, putting forth everything we have. And um, that's, it, as donors, I really and genuinely thank you, thankful that you all have chosen to use your time and your resources to help out um, young men and women like myself who have come to this program hoping to advance our careers one day and hopefully give back as well. Um, so with that, I just want to say uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. And uh, God bless. And uh, to hell with Georgia. <laughs>Good way to end it, DJ. Um, last but not least, he is number seven in your batting lineup tonight, but he's number one in our hearts. AD Mike Bobinski. I want to know for sure when I'm done here, but I think this microphone's gonna make me sound better than Brandon. I've got a better voice than him, and I want to just verify that here tonight. Uh, you know, Barb Dockweiler, who has a lot to do with putting this event on, for some reason put me last tonight, and I got a chance to follow Mary and Tom and DJ and Ollie and Jonathan and Megan, and we, we've got to fix that in the future. This is not a good thing. I, I don't have a lot to add after all those great comments were given tonight, and I thank everybody for taking the time to come up here tonight and share all that with us. Uh, but on behalf of our athletic association, I want to issue a very sincere thank you to all the donors that are with us tonight. I mean, you, as has been said many times, you all make this happen. You make our program happen. You provide amazing opportunities for our young people. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart and the bottom of all of our hearts for what you've done for us. This is a record turnout here tonight. It's a cool, cool setting. Nice to do it here on the floor of McCamish Pavilion. I think it's, a, it's probably, the, as Brandon noted, this is the first event we've done here on the floor. And I, I kind of like it here. We may, uh, we may have to try and work this into the schedule in the future, but it's a, it's a really terrific setting. Uh, before I give you a couple of other thoughts, there are a couple of people I'd like to recognize. First and foremost, uh, our president, Bud Peterson, his wife Fowler with us here this evening. If you could please stand. <laughs> the life of a college president is one that you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy in terms of a schedule, but I really appreciate Bud and Val taking the time to be with us tonight. It, it's important that uh, it's a great demonstration of how important this is for all of us, and again, I thank you for being here with us. Uh, head coaches, I know a lot of our head coaches are with us tonight, and I'd like to uh, get, let them all be recognized because they play a huge role in the development of our student athletes, and I think it's nice that we could take a, take a moment to just uh, give them a brief round of applause. What I'll ask is, 
let me introduce all of them, have them stand, and then we'll give a round of applause at the end here. I think we have most everybody here with us tonight. I'm going to try my best to pick them out, if, and I'll miss somebody, but we'll figure it out here. Over there, Danny Hall, baseball coach. Please stand, Danny. Uh, let's see, Grover Hinsdale. We've got our men's track and field coach. I heard Michelle Joseph's name spoken before. Where's Michelle? Mayor's Michelle, women's basketball coach. I see Kenny Thorne, our men's tennis coach over here. Rodney Harmon, our women's tennis coach. Brian Gregory, basketball coach. Shelly Horner, softball, right over here. Our newest head coach, Michelle Collier, volleyball. Where is, where is Michelle? I, I saw her earlier. There she is in the back. And our cross country and women's track and field coach, Alan Drosky. Where's Alan? Yeah, got it right this time. And, and then finally, we previously mentioned Bruce Hepler, our, our golf coach. Where's Bruce? Bruce is back here. Who did I miss? Who did I miss? Oh, Courtney Hart. Oh my gosh, Courtney. My favorite. My, Courtney Hart, our men's and women's swimming coach. My buddy, her husband, Justin. Uh, these are our head coach. Paul Johnson's on the road recruiting, or else he'd be with her tonight. Uh, but please, a round of applause for all of our head coaches. A couple of weeks ago, at the, around the college football playoff, I was, we were down, I was down in Dallas, and I had a chance to be at a talk that Condoleezza Rice, former Secretary of State and now a professor at Stanford, uh, gave. And one of, amongst the many amazing things that she said was, a, was a, a point that she recommended, or something she recommends to everybody, is that when you get started every day, remind yourself why it is you do what you do. And as I thought about that, no, no business more so than college athletics is that important, particularly today, as we're in a in sort of a brave new world of college athletics. It's easy to lose sight of why we do what we do in this business. But tonight, for me, is one of those great reminders. We're, we're here, obviously, to support the education and the development of our student athletes. It's why you're all here. It's why we're here. It's why we do what we do, uh, to, to help them develop into young men, young women, who are ready and fully prepared to lead lives of meaning and significance. That's what this is all about, and I think it's very healthy to, uh, to remind ourselves of that on a regular basis. Speaking of our student athletes, there's nearly 100 of them here this evening, and clearly we take great pride, and you can see why, in who they are, what they do, how they represent Georgia Tech every day in the classroom, in competition, in the community, and even in communities abroad. And not, not the, the Dominican Republic trip, that's been referred to a couple times as was a, a, a really miraculous experience and one that we need to build on. And we need to do more things like that because clearly it was impactful uh, for the young people that were there and the, and the stories about that trip have really bled through our entire student athlete population. Really a, just a terrific thing. You know, this season it's, it's, was well known and, and much celebrated that we had a terrific football season. And the, while the winning was great, and let me emphasize that, the winning was great. I'm, uh, I'm not, <laughs> not going to downplay that at all. But for me, the very best part of that story was watching our young men experience the opportunity to, to come together, to push each other, to believe in each other, to trust each other, and to truly experience what it means to be a team, the power and the meaning of, of really becoming a team, and along the way, win or lose, representing us in the very best way, in a way that made the entire Georgia Tech community proud. Providing the support for our young people to experience those kinds of rich opportunities is what being a scholarship donor is all about. It's a really special thing, and as I think several people mentioned already here this evening, I'm not sure there's a bigger or more meaningful gift anybody can give. So thank you all for what you've done with that. It, it's a, it is a tre tremendously impactful thing. And, and, and you, you, can't, you can't do anything bigger or better in, in my eyes. As intercollegiate athletics changes and evolves around us, and it is, it's changing from within and from without, there's a lot of pressure that's, uh, that's being placed right now. Much of the focus, though, is on student athlete well-being and the quality of the experience that our young people have. And that's a really good focus. It's where the focus should be. But at the end of the day, it's also going to be a very expensive focus. And so as we look ahead and trying to determine how we're going to manage that, 
our scholarship endowment program is going to become more important than ever. A year ago, I stood up here and talked about how our endowment program was very important to our financial stability. It was a, a vital component of how we, how we operated. Well, as I stand here today, I could say that same thing. I could say that it's very important, but that would really be understating the reality, and, and the reality as our world has changed here in this last 12 months. It not only is very important, but I need stronger adjectives. It's, it's essential, it's critical, it's crucial to how we're gonna survive here and, and thrive at Georgia Tech in the years ahead. In this past year, we've made some real progress. Our scholarship endowment through the generosity of so many has grown to over $50 million. And that's a real number and a very healthy number. And I would tell you that amongst our peers, we're in a good place. But that good place leaves us over $60 million away from where we need to be to fully endow our scholarship program. And that target keeps moving. It keeps getting bigger each and every day. So as we work to build our scholarship endowment program, and should your personal circumstances permit, I would be forever grateful if you could consider adding to your scholarship endowment, becoming a first-time scholarship endowment donor, or encouraging others in the Georgia Tech family to support this wonderful program. Again, I, I don't know that you'll be able to do anything that will be more impactful for others, more meaningful to yourselves, uh, and, and that will be something that will last in perpetuity. As, as Mary Brock mentioned, this is, this is a permanent program. This will, this will outlive all of us in this room and, and provide benefits for many, many years to come. So again, if it's possible, any or all of that would be greatly appreciated. Jim Hall, Jack Thompson, Mindy Hyde, Gary Lanier, myself, we're all ready and willing to talk to any of you about that at any point in time. But again, we are, we are so appreciative of what you have done. We know you'll do great things in the future. And thank you all for being with us tonight. Thanks very much. All right, that, that concludes the program. But a final note, I was told this is the biggest endowment dinner that we've had. It just keeps getting bigger every year, over 360 guests this year, which blows away uh, 2014. And that obviously is because of the endowment donors. So before we go, one final hand as a thank you to all of the endowment donors. Thanks again to the AT Fund. Thanks certainly on behalf of the Georgia Tech Athletic Association because in reality you guys also make uh, me, have given me the ability to stand up here, give Mike the ability to stand up here. So thanks on behalf of the GTAA as well. If you could get with Danny Karnick, uh, the photographer over there now. If you haven't yet, we would love, like I said, to have a photo of each donor and recipient group. That's it for tonight. Thanks for coming everybody. And one final time, go Jackets. <laughs>